right now at six. A weekend group bike ride ends tragically in Jefferson County. And I must say that we are absolutely heartbroken about the event. I speak on behalf of the board, every one of our members. And the driver who intentionally crashed into riders is still out there. The countdown is on to primary day in Colorado. Before you fill out your ballot, we sit down with two Republican candidates for governor to help you make an informed decision. Plus, the Stanley Cup Finals are heating up. A rough night for Darcy Kemper, the best night of the series for Andre Vasilevsky. But these two hockey towns may be more similar than you think. We take you live to Tampa. Thank you for watching Denver 7 News at 6. I'm Jessica Porter. And I'm Tom Muston. Right now, a metro-wide search is on for the driver who intentionally crashed into a group of bicyclists in Jefferson County over the weekend. Denver 7's Micah Smith smoke, spoke with organizers who put together that ride, and they say it typically is a very joyous occasion. I talked to a representative with the Jeffco Sheriff's Office, and she told me she knows tension between drivers and cyclists have existed for a long time. But that tension should never rise to the level of this crime. Around 950 on Sunday morning, a driver crashed their SUV into two cyclists on US Highway 40 near I-70 in Evergreen. The cyclists were on the shoulder of the road. He passed one of the cyclists at the rear and then intentionally drove his vehicle into two of the cyclists. Jeffco Sheriff's Office Public Affairs Director Jenny Fulton says then the SUV sped into the El Rancho restaurant parking lot. He had a bicycle stuck underneath of his vehicle and it appeared that he was trying to dislodge it. Bolton says once the suspect got rid of the bike, they sped off. The sheriff's office has identified the suspect as 38 year old Alan Haley Mill. Mill is facing assault in the first degree and accidents involving death or personal injuries charges. We have a victim that's in critical condition and we don't know whether she'll be able to fully recover. I must say that we are absolutely heartbroken about the event. I speak on behalf of the board, every one of our members. Valerie Southgate is on the board of Team Evergreen, the nonprofit that organized Sunday's ride. Southgate can't speak about the investigation or the victims, but confirmed they are members of her organization. It was one of our regular rides on a Sunday that had been in existence for an awfully long time and are usually a very joyous place to be. But on this particular Sunday, absolutely tragic. Our fugitive unit is tasked with trying to find this individual. But Fulton says investigators are also asking for the community's help. The Jeffco Sheriff's Office says if you know where the suspect is, call local law enforcement, not necessarily the Jeffco Sheriff's Office because the suspect may no longer be in their jurisdiction. Reporting in Jeffco, Micah Smith, Denver 7. Thank you, Micah. One year ago today, a tragic shooting rocked the small community of Arvada right in the middle of Old Town. Arvada police officer Gordon Beasley and Good Samaritan Johnny Hurley were killed. Beasley was killed after being shot from behind. Hurley rushed to take down the shooter and was killed by responding officers who didn't know where the threat was coming from. Today, friends and family of Hurley held a moment of silence in his honor. <laughs> Police say Hurley's actions likely saved lives. Today, community members were also invited to visit the Arvada Police Department to remember Officer Beasley. Coloradans who have filed their taxes are poised to receive more money from the Colorado Cash Back Plan than originally anticipated. The June forecast from the Office of State Planning and Budgeting shows our economy is recovering nicely. That means single filers will get at least $750. Joint filers will get at least $1,500. And these payments should hit your bank account by September. Let's talk about the Avs now. The Avs are now in an official battle in the Stanley Cup Finals. The Lightning are two-time defending champs, and we knew they weren't just going to lay down and hand over the cup. Yeah, the Avs lead the Stanley Cup Finals two games to one following the Lightning's 6-2 to two victory last night right here on Denver 7. Denver 7 anchor Ann Trujillo is covering the cup for us live from Tampa and doing a great job. And Ann, a lot of folks would think that Florida and hockey don't mix, but that couldn't be further from the truth. Exactly, Tom. I mean, people here, they love their hockey. In fact, last night's game, that was a sellout, and it was the team's 300th consecutive sellout. So they're big on Tampa Bay Lightning here. And it was really team strategy and to how this all happened. It was uh, in 2010 that the current owner took over. He brought in Steve Eiserman to run the team and then made a commitment to the community by giving 1,000 schools 
street hockey gear. So even after we left, those schools still had a complete set of gear that they could play ball hockey. They had a curriculum from us that they could teach in PE, and, and the kids started playing. We started to form leagues. We then, again, as part of the Build the Thunder, we built 10 outdoor rinks uh, in the, in the five-county area around Amelie Arena, and, and it has, it's made just a huge difference. And the team owner also donates $50,000 per home game to a local charity. So this community, they are all in. And I'm joined by Russell Haythorn. He's been out, out and about here that's in Tampa right. Bay. You've been seeing a lot of sights out here. Yeah, that's right. And there's a lot that makes the Tampa Bay area special, including its deep water port. In fact, it has the largest deep water port in the state of Florida, and it has three ports for cruise ships. And there's other industry in this town that makes it special as well, including the cigar industry. Tampa is home to J.C. Newman Cigar Company, the oldest and only premium cigar maker left in the United States. It is still owned by the Newman family, and most of their cigars are either hand-rolled or rolled by antique cigar machines dating back to 1930. You know it's a special place the second you walk through the doors of the nearly 130-year-old building because of that distinct smell that hits you right when you walk in, that cigar tobacco, and also the immaculate condition of the factory, the store, and the museum on site. Fourth generation owner Drew Newman says, these cigars are naturally cured, naturally aged, and rolled to perfection every time. Our most famous cigar that we roll right behind me is called the American. And what makes that cigar unique is that it's entirely handmade in the United States. Cigars are to Tampa like cars are to Detroit, like wine is to California. Cigars are part of the cultural fabric here in Tampa. We also visited Clearwater Beach today. It was ranked the number one beach in America by TripAdvisor last year, and that's because of its crystal clear waters, its sandy white beaches, and its family-friendly laid-back vibe. But Anne, all that is great, but we can't forget why we're here. We are here for the Colorado Avalanche. They are going to win a game four. These you know chains it. Are, you know it. These chains are awesome. They're they're becoming <laughs> as synonymous with the team as uh, as the Blink 182 song. There you go. <laughs> what is yeah. the, what's the name of that? All the small things. All the things. small things. That's, That's right. it. You look good in that. Russell. All the small things. That's, Doesn't he? Chain is the opposite of that. Tom and it's going to be a victory we'll cigar. We're going to be smoking on Wednesday. Fun here in Tampa. <laughs> Hopefully, Avs fans Great definitely want to see them smoke the lightning on that ice. And remember, Denver 7 is your home for the Stanley Cup Finals. Our coverage of the Game 4 will begin tomorrow morning at 4.30 from Tampa. And we'll have coverage all day long ahead of our pregame show coverage at 5.30. We'll also have a post game show immediately following. We are just one week away from the primary here in Colorado, and all eyes are on the governor's race. Now, governor Jared Polis doesn't have a primary challenger, but there are two Republicans competing. Denver 7 political reporter Megan Lopez sat down with Heidi Ganahl and Greg Lopez to talk about their top priorities. So, Heidi Ganahl, running for governor. Greg Lopez here. Tell me why you think that you would be the best candidate for the job. So, I understand the issue that deals with crime and transportation and air quality and development and all the things that the state is facing. I think right now what people are looking for is a voice that they can relate to, someone that they can truly feel that cares about them. What I hear around the state is folks are really upset and frustrated about government overreach, whether it's taxes, fees, regulations, um, you know, moving industries out of Colorado, like the energy industry. Do you trust the results of the 2020 election? And do you trust that our elections are secure? Well, I wouldn't be running if I didn't think I could win, but I am worried about people's lack of confidence in their vote. Do you believe in mail-in uh, mail voting? Yes, I think for the single mom who can't, you know, take a day off to go vote or the busy um, teacher or farmer or rancher who can't, you know, um, figure out uh, how to leave their crops for a day to go do that it's very important to have that available. I do believe that our elections need to be uh, fine-tuned. So is that to say that you have doubts about our, our system? I mean, what's your... What's I do. You know, we're not the gold standard by any stretch of the imagination. And so if that's the case, um, you know, how can you trust this system to elect you to the governor's mansion if you have doubts about the very system that's needed to get you there? Because I'm going to trust the people. I'm going to trust the people. 
you know, I'm going to trust the poll watchers. I'm going to touch the election judges. You know, there's nothing that we can do until we wait to see what the voice of the people has to say. What do you think the governor can do in terms of inflation? What control do you think that they have over inflation? Yeah. And what do you plan on doing about it? So in regards to inflation, I believe there's a lot a governor can do. First and foremost, reduce the regulation that is suffocating small business owners across this state. Well, it's not that the governor has much control over inflation, but he definitely has a voice. He's not talking about what the president should and shouldn't be doing. As governor, I would be mandating for the president to remove some of these restrictions. How the, much control do you think the governor really has over the president? I think he's got a lot of influence, not control. Do you believe in man-made climate change? And what do you think um, Colorado's role in our climate should be? Well, I certainly believe man has a role in it, but I think we've gone too far too fast. The science is still out. Right? You talk to scientists, is it man-made? You'll talk to some and say, no, it's not that impactful. You know, so I'm not the expert. And what's your, your stance on abortion? I support all life, you know, all lives matter, even the unborn. What if the doctor did say it's the life of the mother or the life of the baby? I mean, how do you make that decision if, if all lives matter? What's well, a medical decision that the doctor is making? Look, so then is abortion okay if, if it well, really again, is the life of the it's mother? It's not an abortion, right? Everybody wants to say it's an abortion. The family decides and the doctor decides from a medical standpoint, which is a life that we can preserve. It's not the life that we're going to terminate. I believe that um, the bill that just passed this last session is not how the people of Colorado feel. Abortion until birth is not um, something that I can support. You've said in previous interviews that you don't believe in abortion except for the cases of rape, incest, the health of the mother. And I believe in one interview you said the health of the fetus. What did you mean by the health of the fetus? I'd focus on a decision between the mom and the, the, the doctor on that issue. But um, if a fetus passes away and you expect the mom to carry it full term, then that might be an instance where you could take action sooner. Heidi Ganahl. Greg Lopez running for governor. Just have a little bit more than a week left uh, before big primary day. Thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. Thank you. We had a beautiful, cool first day of summer, but the 80s and 90s are going to make a quick comeback. Cleaning an iconic venue can feel like a monumental task. A lot of trash or recyclables or, yes, a lot of waste material. Red Rocks is up for the challenge and doing so in a sustainable way. Plus, we take you back live to Tampa to hear from coaches and players on how they plan to rebound in Game 4.